I was brought up in a clock and watch making family. My grandfather started repairing watches when he was a lad in 1910 and eventually had his own business. My father joined him and did all the watch repairs. There were always clocks and watches around the house and it seemed like the normal thing to do to go into the trade. So I've been doing clock repairs now for 35 years. I've worked on some very interesting, important clocks, as well as clocks that don't have any real intrinsic value, but they have a huge sentimental importance to the customer. When someone brings a clock in to me or I go and collect a clock, we have to make a decision on whether it should be conserved, restored, or just cleaned and overhauled. And this clock is a Victorian carriage clock that was highly polished when it was new and is meant to be highly polished. So we wouldn't leave this in a tarnished state. We would actually polish this up so that it would look beautifully clean and polished behind the glass sides. These two clocks are quite different. Um, this, this one was made in uh, around about 1920. I've just overhauled this and cleaned it up, so it actually looks almost like new. This clock is, is a different kettle of fish altogether. It dates back to about 1720, and it would be a shame to polish this up. So what we'll do is we'll do a conservation job on it, and that is to keep its patination. So it actually shows that it is the age that it is although I will have to clean the rust from it and the verdigris as that's actually rotting the metal away. Instead of replacing the worn parts, and it is a very worn clock, we build up the working surfaces with an epoxy resin and shape it up to the correct form. So we keep all of the old parts and keep it original. We don't specialise in any one type of clock. We do all types from watch repairs right through to church clocks. One of my earliest memories was going up St Mary's Church clock tower. My grandfather started looking after the clock in about 1930. He had to go up every single day to wind the clock up, which obviously kept him very fit. In about 1955, my father took over from my grandfather, looking after the church clock. And it's then when I started going up with my father, not to wind the clock, it had been made into an automatic winding clock then. And I took over in the early 90s, where we did a full overhaul on the clock. And then since then, I go up on a regular basis, maintaining it, oiling it, repairing it if it goes wrong. A lot of people rely upon the chime and strike of the clock. Okay. Hi, Steve. Thanks for coming along. It's all right, no problem. Right. Did you turn it on downstairs? Yeah. Because of the health and safety rules, I'm not allowed to go up on my own, and I'm lucky enough to have David to come along. We have stripped the whole clock down. We've gone through the whole of the carolin repaired it and got it working again after years of being stopped and people of Whitney really appreciate it. When the carolin's playing, the bells sound absolutely fantastic. 
and I love to hear the bells myself when I'm taking the kids to school. The sound is really brilliant. How can I help you? It's not on the phone. Oh yes, yes, yes. About this watch which your dad's looked after for us. That was some while ago. Mm. A lot of people that bring clocks and watches into me used to bring clocks and watches to my grandfather and father. They've got their repair marks inside, so there's a real nice family connection there. OK, what I'll do is I'll let my watchmaker have a look at it and we'll work out an estimate of what it's going to cost. I can feel immediately the wind is very, very sharp, isn't it? When someone brings a clock into me, I'll inspect it, check it out for wear, dirt or spring breakage, past repairs and keep that logged on my database. I've been keeping paper records since 1975 and now I have a very comprehensive database of all the clocks that I've done in all my working life. People bring a clock in that hasn't been in to me for 25, 30 years. Very, very surprised when I tell them what I did all those years ago. I'll take photographs of the clock and often take a video of some of the more complex repair work so that I can hand people the DVD of the work that I've done. Because a lot of the clocks have been passed down in the family, so to have a record of the work that's been done to the clock is incredibly important to people. This one was quite an interesting one. It belongs to a 94-year-old lady who found me on the internet, bless her. And the initial problem to the clock was caused by the click spring here. The click spring broke here, uh, which uh, released the power of the clock. And when it came to an abrupt halt, it actually broke the teeth out of the great wheel. It also broke some teeth in the second wheel here. And also just here, you can see this ratchet tooth here has been badly bent right round. In fact, that broke off. So I had to set a new piece into that as well. Here you can see I've actually cut out a dovetail out of the great wheel so I could set in this bar of brass. And then I've shaped it up just roughly to start with. Then I've gone on to shape it up correctly. And here you can see the click spring that I've repaired. What I did is I cut it off at this point here, dovetailed and hard soldered a new piece round here. And as you can see, it looks exactly like the original piece. Things have changed hugely since I started. The skills have very much stayed the same, but there has been new technology to help us. Sometimes a big frustration is people will bring a clock in and they say it stops occasionally and I can put it on test and it'll actually work for weeks on end. One thing that makes a big difference is the computerized timing and diagnostic tool that I have. It'll actually highlight where there's a fall off in power that might not actually stop the clock every time, but obviously does stop it occasionally, usually when it's back at the customer's house. I spend one and a half to two days a week going out and about collecting, delivering, setting up, repairing. If people have taken clocks back from my workshop, I'll go out to the house and make sure they're set up correctly. I've been out to some incredibly interesting and important places, including a lot of the Oxford colleges. And I've even been out to Chequers, the Prime Minister's country residence.
I certainly take as much care in every single clock that I do, whether it's got massive value or whether it's worth a couple of quid. If it's important enough for the customer to have it repaired, then it's important enough to do the correct type of work. One of the greatest pleasures in being a clockmaker is sometimes you get clocks coming that haven't been working for years and years, and they've got huge sentimental value for the owner. You repair it, make it look great, and customers are so appreciative of the work that you've done and time that you've spent on it.